Hello YouTube and welcome to FS Mania. We are kicking off a new series on flying business class jets, very light and or medium sized jets. And in order to do that, we're going to spend just a little bit of time and I'm going to show you how I go about planning a flight. One of the ways, one of the many ways I plan flights in different ways using different software programs depending on where I'm flying and what I'm flying. But um, I was asked the question, what flight planning software do I use? And I'm going to show you what I'm using right now for this particular series. And although I do have other software as well that I can use too. But what you're looking at right now on the screen is uh, SimBrief, which is available at SimBrief.com. It's free to use. You do need to get a username and a password. It works re real well for planning flights. I have found, especially if you're flying airline type flights, it is modeled similar to a dispatcher or dispatching system. And we have a lot of options that you can tailor it to suit whatever airline you might want to fly with. Or in this case, I'm just using it to um, basically work out a route. And let me just dive in and show you sort of how it works. So you, when you go under dispatch and you look at dispatch system, you'll come up with this page um, right here where their options are. And what we want to do is just come in and fill in a few of the blanks. And so for our airline, we'll type in FS Mania or FSM, our flight number. We can put in whatever we want. We'll put in flight 316. And we are going to depart on our first flight from Centennial Airport in Denver, which the identifier is Kilo Alpha Papa Alpha. And we are going to fly to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And the identifier for that is Kilo Juliet Alpha Charlie. Now, when I type those in, you notice that it automatically put in an alternate. This is Salt Lake City. And so it has done that and it has put in today's date and a proposed departure time. I can change this, which will affect the, uh, the briefing, um, will affect the weather. Uh, forecast, but I'm just going to leave this where it is right now in Zulu in this area uh, we have to add seven hours so we sub subtract seven hours so that's going to make it whatever that that works out seven hours after 1 a.m. in the morning or before 1 a.m. in the morning but at any rate um, you get the idea there over here there's some options this is the format for the briefing this is the most common one there are others you can see depending on here's one for Delta Airlines United Airlines and so forth so you can change it to suit the airline that you're flying with also you can change the units to be in kilograms or pounds and this is your contingency fuel it right now is in auto you can set it zero two three five percent I think in auto it defaults to five percent and the reserve fuel, you can tell at what time. If we're flying jets, normally it's 30 minutes. If we're flying prop planes, it's 45 minutes. So we'll just leave that alone. I think when we plan this flight, we're going to see that um, the fuel could be a question. So um, so at any rate, we'll go ahead and we need to pick our, our aircraft. And um, unfortunately, the first plane that I'm going to fly is the Embraer uh, Phenom, which I believe the designator is... Echo Mike Bravo dash 500. It's not listed on here. These are RJs. These are some of the other Embraer aircraft, but the the Phenom's not listed that I can see. There's about 50 airplanes in here, so we'll find one uh, that's close. And actually, the Cessna uh, Mustang is close to the Phenom, so we can just go ahead and pick that. And we'll just use that just to get us close. I'm not gonna worry too much about the fuel calculations for this flight but if I were flying a larger aircraft I would be looking more close at that and I have found this to be very accurate so over here you can also ask for detailed information more detailed information notams you can get runway analysis ETOPS planning and so forth um, all I'm really looking for right now is the nav log so I didn't I did not check anything else off we're just gonna look at the um, that will get weather information on here. You'll see that. So these en entries are automatically filled in, and you can see. Um, but you can also change them if you want to. 
they can be overridden but um, in fact I think I will change the altitude to flight level 240 let's see we'll put in 24,000 I think it'll it may go back to 240 oh, it stays there okay and you can tell it how many passengers you're gonna have we'll just go ahead and say we're gonna have four passengers you can put in the cargo um, yeah we'll put in 500 pounds of cargo and we'll leave our zero fuel weight along. It has said that we have an in route time of two hours and ten minutes. We'll leave that in there. Departing runway 17 left and arriving runway 19. Now those are just in there. They're optional. You can change them. So let's just take a look at the route that it has automatically put in here for me. And if I don't like this route, I can change it. I can use any of these route finder, sim routes, fat route, fat aware, flight aware, to go in and uh, it'll take me to another website and I can put in all the information and it'll bring up a route. Um, particularly, this is helpful if you're looking for a route that is normally flown, a preferred route that has SIDS and STARS. Um, you can go in and see what routes have been flown the most. Uh, to and from your um, departure destination airports and so it's a these were helpful tools to get your route in here um, I actually am pretty happy with the route that um, I have in here right now and so we're just going to work with that basically it's flying us from the Kremlin VOR Victor 20, 328 to the Hayden VOR and then a jet route, Jet 163, J163 to Rock Springs, and then Victor 328 to Tubac Intersection. So we can analyze the route just by clicking on the Analyze Route. And you can see that the route is valid, so all of the waypoints are up to date. And Navigraph is what you would use to keep your uh, nav data up, up to date. So um, the last time I've updated was 1406, so um, just a little out of date, not too bad. And then there is a, um, a small chart that shows the route. So we're going to be leaving Centennial and flying to the northwest to uh, Wyoming, to the western part of Wyoming where Jackson Hole is located. And you can see our route of flight, kind of a nice, almost straight line. And um, also we can look at terrain and that's a pretty cool little feature you can see that when we leave Denver we're going to be heading out over the Rocky Mountains and pretty much be over the mountains um, through most of the flight and we can also look at weather let's see if this will give it to me here um, okay we're, we're zoomed in too close so if we zoom out we can see if there's any um, segments and I can see an area here um, that where there is and I can see some over here and some over here so you can look at at a glance what the weather looks like and also we're looking at wind um, barbs here to show what the winds are at the various flight levels and uh, we can also look at clouds so that's kinda cool we can see what the cloud layer looks like along our route and we can look look at our center boundaries um, if we zoom in here you can see that we're taking off and we're going to be in Denver's center and then we're going to be uh, passing over into Salt Lake Center so you can see the center boundaries and we can also show airports intersections nav aids and airports etc but we don't need to see all that because we got something better to look at that with so just wanted you to see that you do have those options available so what we want to do now that we've got everything in and we're pretty happy with our route we, what we want to do is go ahead and generate the briefing so we can just click on the button and confirm that we want to do that and it's gonna take it just a minute usually it goes through pretty quick I have um, had to do it more than once when it's been busy but um, this is generating our briefing package in real time there we are 100 percent and we're directed back and we can come down here and so here's our briefing We'll just take a quick look at that. It's got the date. It's got our departure airport and our uh, destination airport listed at the top. And uh, contingency fuel for delays, blah, blah, blah. There's some remarks there. Um, what we're mainly looking for is two, these two lines right here. There's a summary here, and here's our route. 
So uh, in our summary, we I can see we're going to be flying at flight level 240. Our uh, temperature deviation is uh, plus 2 degrees. And our, uh, what is GC, uh, great circle distance is 359 nautical miles. Our estimated in route time is 1 hour and 55 minutes. Our tropopause height, which I could care less, but of course all the weather is located below that. And so we're not going to be getting up that high, certainly. Our average wind component is minus 59. So we're going to be bucking a headwind on this trip. And the actual distance as compared to the Great Circle distance is 374 nautical miles. And our fuel burn is 1,800 um, pounds, 1,820 pounds. So when we carry 2,800 pounds, that's important to know that um, that's what we'd be burning if we were flying the Mustang. We're flying the Phenom. And so our route uh, shows us from uh, Kappa Direct to the Kremlin VOR, Victor 328, to the Hayden VOR, then the jet route, and um, Rock Springs, and then Victor 328 uh, to Tuvac, and then direct to uh, KJAC. So we can also on here um, look and see there's information for Salt Lake City for our alternate. Here's fuel information. Um, so if we were flying accurately with this um, particular aircraft, we could get a, a very good estimation of what our fuel requirements would be. And if we scroll on down, um, we can look at winds um, in our climb over uh, the various waypoints at various um, flight levels. So it can help us to plan uh, cruising altitude. and. Then here's some note, notums, and we can also come down and look at our METARs and our uh, TAFs, our Terminal Aerodome Forecast, and we can see what the winds are going to be doing um, at our departure. We're going to, we can see what the uh, weather looks like at our destination, and we can see what it looks like at our, at our um, alternate. So that is basic. Um, overview of SimBrief. It's very, very good, very detailed. Uh, sometimes gives us a lot more information than I really want, but um, can't have too much information. I shouldn't have said that. Okay, so I want to um, show you an, another part of this. So if we go back and we look at this um, route, um, then I can come over and plot that route on another site that I use, which is uh, SkyVector. So, because I like to see what, what the route's going to look like on the chart. So, we're going to flip over to skyvector.com. So, when we go to skyvector, we uh, come into a uh, map, and if you look up here on the upper right, you can see there's several different um, maps that are available. I shouldn't say maps, I should be saying charts. We're talking about charts here. So you can see there's the uh, VFR charts, and then there's the um, low altitude in route charts, and then also the high altitude. Here's world high in route chart. So basically, we have chart coverage of pretty much anywhere and everywhere we want to fly. So we can come over here in this um, flight plan section, and we can put in our departure airport. So let's put that in and add that and notice it zooms us right into Centennial which is right there so our first uh, waypoint that we're going to want to fly to is actually uh, the Kremlin VOR but we're going to be flying a, a SID so uh, know that on the SID we need to intercept a radial off of the Denver VOR so I'm going to actually put the Denver VOR in there so now we've got a magenta line, a little hard to see right now. We'll zoom in. And then we're going to be flying to a intersection that's called Zimmer. So it's Z-I-M-M-R, Zimmer. We can add that. 
and it's out here and then we're going to fly direct to the Kremlin VOR so let me put that in and there's the Kremlin VOR and then from there we go Victor 323 I believe it was 328 now you notice we don't see a Victor airway that's because we're on the world high so let's go to the world low world low lo and behold there's the Kremlin VOR there's Victor 328 and we're gonna go to this VOR right here the Hayden VOR which the identifier is Charlie Hotel Echo we'll add that it draws us a line and then from there we're gonna take a jet route and so let's go back to the world high and the jet routes jet 163 J 163 to Rock Springs so we'll put that in Rock Springs which is Oscar Charlie Sierra we got that in there you can see now we're flying along J 163 and from there we actually get back on a Victor Airway so let's go back to the um, world low and it's Victor 328 to Big Piney so we'll put that in there and the identifier is Bravo Papa India and then from there I believe I recall it was to Tuvok intersection which is right there so let's put that intersection in and this is a whole lot um, well I love paper charts but I gotta tell you these charts are um, are have all the same information and these are free so you can't beat that and then we're going to go direct uh, to Jackson Hole which is right here now what I'm planning on doing is flying the ILS uh, check the weather and that's what we're gonna be looking for is flying ILS into Jackson Hole and the ILS is 19 and the initial approach fix is Dunwar VOR Delta November Whiskey so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in Delta November Whiskey and then the first intersection is uh, then is Quirt so we'll put that in that's not the first intersection it's another approach fix Quirt. We'll add that and then we can add in our destination which is Kilo Juliet Alpha Charlie and now I'll zoom out here and you can see our route of flight all the way from Centennial and Denver flying along the airways over the various nav aids, the jet route and our descent and approach into K Jackson, uh, to K Jack. And I can look over here and see total nautical mileage with the route that I'm flying, 437 nautical miles. Now it's say, telling me three hours and 58 minutes, but let's change that ground speed. And let's go with a ground speed of about uh, 300 knots and let's see how that looks. I know we're going to have some headwind, but we are flying a jet. Now we're looking a little bit more reasonable of hour and 27 minute flight and that's within our fuel range that's good so there's our flight now a few other little options we've got we can look at it on the VFR chart which is kinda nice to do so we can go down and take a look at what we're going to be flying over what the, um, the minimum safe altitudes are in route and terrain for terrain clearance and so forth we can just kind of take a, a look and gander at um, you know what other airports are around us and so forth and if I wanted to see where Salt Lake City is I can just go ahead and put that in just in case we have to divert there it is so let's zoom back out it's a pretty good ways away from uh, Jackson Hole I mean it adds another 178 nautical miles to our flight that's our alternate that's the one that the uh, program picked for us but we're going to Jackson Hole and I'm counting on us getting in there we'll see how that goes um, there are other, a few other things you can do with this you can also show segments you can show uh, weather radar 
satellite, infrared, etc. Those are layers that you can cut on. And so if I cut that on, I can see there is some, looks like some snow clouds and um, ice, etc. If um, let's see if I see the segments. No, don't see any right now. But um, but anyway, that's what the uh, the radar is showing. And uh, so skyvector.com. And then here is one other tool, one final tool that I use. Well, not one final tool. I use a lot of tools, but another tool I use in um, flight planning. And this is a website called myairplane.com, and they have um, the uh, NACO approach plates. Now, this is for U.S. terminal procedures. I don't think that they have anything other than U.S. at this website. I could be mistaken, but um, it seems like when I'm not flying in the United States, which is often I'm not, um, then I have to just Google airports and get charts from um, other places. But this is, if you're in the United States, this is excellent. So I can put in, um, let's say if we're going to fly out of um, Centennial and the identifier is Kappa, I can just search by the identifier and I can look down here and I can pull up the airport diagram. There it is. I can look at it on here or I can print it out. Um, it comes up in a PDF format. I can print it out. Um, I can also look at departure procedures. Didn't mean for that to happen. I can also look at departure procedures and I know that the Rockies 2 is the departure that we're going to fly when we leave Centennial. And so what the uh, we're going to be flying this transition right here, the Zimmer transition. There's the Denver VOR, and Centennial is down here to the south. So we're basically going to be flying runway heading and intercepting the 278 degree radial from the Denver VOR and flying to Zimmer intersection, and then from there to the Kremlin VOR. That's the departure procedure we're going to fly, and then we're going to get on the airway from there. So I can print this out. I can also go back and let's go and put in Jackson Hole, KJAC. We'll search that. And if I'm anticipating flying, um, well, if I, if I don't know what approach I'm going to fly, I can print all of them out. But if I'm going to anticipate flying, say, the ILS-19 approach, I can go down here and look it up. And there it is right there. And I can open it up, and lo and behold, there's my approach plate. And that is not the approach that actually that we're going to fly. So let's close that one. And which one did I click? Yeah, that's the approach we're going to fly right there. So the initial approach fix is Dunwar. And then we'll be 11,000 feet to Quirt. And then descend to 9700, intercept the glide slope, and fly the localizer into Jackson Hole. High terrain off to the uh, to the right hand side of the approach course to be wary of, and of course lots of high terrain all around, and then the missed approach procedure, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of that available at uh, this website, which is myairplane.com great website. So those are my three tools I use, SimBrief, SkyVector, and MyAirplane.com. And now that we have all that good information, we can go do some flying. So thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. And if you have questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. Thanks a lot. So long from FS Mania.